auto insurance up 33%, used cars up 35%, hotels up 15%, groceries. The American dream is the American nightmare. Why is everything so expensive? Mortgage rates doubled. They're working four jobs and they're making $1,000 more than these people who aren't working at all. What the hell? If we ran our household like the government did, we'd be in jail. <laughs> I went to college, I did everything I was supposed to, and yet I'm $100,000 in student loan debt. We are struggling. If I lost my job right now, we would be homeless. You need eighty dollars to $100,000 a year to survive. Retirement is so far away, I can't even think about it. It's uh, Mount Everest that I'm, I'm at the bottom. I'm being crushed by the system. My wife wants to have another baby, but we just can't afford it. Only half of my family has health insurance right now. My income is not keeping up with inflation. We're paying $100 for the same $40 worth of groceries, and the rent went up as well. Gas prices have gone up. I maxed out on my credit cards for gas, for daycare, to get groceries. I pawned my laptops. I pawned my shoes just so I could pay a bill. It really has been tremendously difficult. I don't really see a light at the end of the tunnel. If this continues, I'll be working until I'm 80. The system is broken and rigged. I've cried many nights of not having money, but I never imagined living in times like this. Well, thank you both for being here. Thank you for having me. This is frustrating, right? Yes. Because you're both working really hard. You work an extra job, you work an extra job, and you, you still can't make it work. It's a sad situation. Um, I worked, you know, I went to college, one of the first people in my family to do that, and I said I did what I was supposed to do. And, and I'm sitting here, you know, working double, coming home every day exhausted, and then when I do the budget at the end of the, at the, end of the week or in the month, I'm in the red. I can't even do the things that I want to do, I love to do for my family. So it makes you feel like a failure. It makes you feel like you're not doing enough when you know you're doing all that you can do. You feel like you're letting your family down. Yeah. Feel now, you changed jobs and took a job for $8,000 a year less. Yeah. Why would you do something like that? Well, I was in the public school sector, and, and that public school sector is kind of broken. And I've uh, been teaching for about seven years, and I've seen the change in education. And I just felt like it was going nowhere. I wasn't really making an impact in students' lives anymore. And so I went to a place, a private school, where I felt like I could. But in that, I had to take a pay cut because they couldn't pay as much uh, as the bigger public schools. You've had your girls come to you and ask to do not extravagant things. They just wanted to do some extracurriculars at school, right? What did you tell them? Well, oftentimes my girls do come to me and ask, Mommy, I want to do, you know, extracurricular activities, like cheerleading. My daughter wants to do gymnastics. And when they ask those types of things, I literally have to say, I don't have the money for it at the moment. And one time, my, my daughter, which really, it literally breaks my heart, but I really believe it needs to be said. My six-year-old, I was picking her up from school, and she said, Mommy, can we go to the store? And I wanted to lighten the load by telling a little joke and say, well, you got the money for it? She was like, yes, Mommy, I have a quarter. And, um... Little did she know that that really broke my heart when she asked that and um, her response. And I had to pull it together while driving. And of course, I say the same old line. I'll get paid in, you know, two weeks. I'll, I'll take you to the store when I get the money. So yes, I, I go through that a lot with my girls. I have no other choice but to tell them that same broken line, because it's true. I you all feel like you're letting the kids down. Yeah, I feel guilty, you know, and it's just angry because um, they, was, they, they told us we were middle class. Uh, when I, we, they removed us, uh, we were getting vouchers for our kids, and they removed the voucher um, and told us we make too much money. And I said, how do we make too much money? Our, our daughter doesn't even have health care. How do we... How do we yeah. We can't even afford it. So how do we make too much money? But that's what they told us. And so as a father, it makes me feel um, like, you know, what, what else can I do? I don't know what to do. Well, how do you feel when you, you see money being spent 
by the government on other things. They're spending money on migrants that are coming in. They're spending money on foreign causes. They're spending money on a lot of things, but it keeps costing more and more and more just to live here. All of that is because of the economy and the fact that they're just, as I said when we started, they're just printing more money. They, yes. You know, we have $35 trillion. I'm not getting out of my lane. This is psychological. I mean, you do what works. This ain't working. The same. Yep, because we're not seeing a dime of it. And it's honestly a slap in the face because I am a taxpayer. I have to babysit every other weekend, and sometimes that's not enough. When, not, when the, a family doesn't need my assistance, I can't work. I saw a leader on social media, and he was bragging about how they got $100 million more for the migrants. And I'm just like, I'm all for, you know, legal migration, but I'm like... And doing it the right I, way. Yeah, we love everybody, you know, but I'm like, we are, um, we're being last. You know, we're being crushed. The middle class are the ones that are hurting. That bracket where we make too much to get help, <laughs> and we make enough to where we still feel the pressure of gas prices. You know, when you take a look at what's going on, electricity, 25% increase, auto insurance up 33%, used cars up 35%, hotels up 15%, groceries, this matters, up 25%. And this is a big one. You need $11,434 additional just to maintain the same living standard that you had in 2021. Did y'all get a raise? No. no. <laughs> between now and then? But th that's what's happening. And those between 40 and 49 years old, highest credit card debt ever. Balancers are averaging $7,600 because people are living on their credit cards, right? They're, they're maxing those out. Rent is up 30%. Mortgage rates doubled. It's getting worse, not better. So what do you tell yourself about what you're gonna do, how you're gonna go about climbing out of this? Because we're headed in the wrong direction. For us, we have to prioritize. We have to say something. We have bills that overlaps. You know, the cell phones, they can wait. We got to pay the rent. That has, that's first. Food has to be on the table first. So we prioritize. So you just tackle the major stuff and leave the, you get to the other stuff when you can. You say you're frustrated that people aren't listening. The people that are in office aren't listening. I tell people, if we ran our household like the government did, we'd be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but you can't go to jail because it costs too much. <laughs> it costs $50,000 a year to put somebody in jail, and that system's broke. Yeah. And you've got two hardworking Americans here. You have children, you're working hard, they're good kids, you're good parents, but every time your daughter talks about her dreams, you gotta be thinking, oh, honey. <laughs> uh. Like, not this again. My daughter came to me a couple of months ago and she remembered before her sisters was born that we used to have mommy and daughter time. She called it girls' day. And the last time we had a girls' day, it'll be this year for seven years, I have not been able to take my teenager to have girls' day. I used to take her to do that type of thing when she was like four or five. But to be transparent here, before I met my husband, I used to be on Section 8. I used to receive $150 a month from the government. That was my income until I literally had the audacity to say, I'm tired of living like this. I want to get up and make something out of myself. I have a daughter and I want to live life only to struggle a lot more in a marriage on two incomes. So my daughter, she came to me, she said, Mommy, I noticed we haven't had our daughter and girls day. I mean, when, when are we gonna have that? The same online, all over again, which is true and factual and sad to me because when she does come at me with those things, I literally feel like a complete failure. Although I know that I'm not, but to her, I used to be looked at, Mommy was a superhero. Mommy always here for me. Although she didn't know I was only getting $150 a month, I would literally take $20 just to make her happy. And now that you, I, I have gotten older, she has gotten older, 
only to suffer a lot more worse than what I did then and having the motive to get up and do something with my life, I'm like, what in the world? I'm sorry. It's hard. I know. It's hard. I just um, never thought I would be living this life like this. The state of our country right now is disgusting. We're definitely angry at the government. We pay taxes for illegal immigrants, for the homeless, and for people that aren't even working. And we're people that are working and are barely surviving. I'm angry at our leadership. The American people deserve better. We're taking care of everybody. What about us? We need help. I'm angry at the system that has failed us over and over and over again. We're being crushed. So what about us? Where is our help? That's the question many fully employed Americans are desperately asking. Why? Because their paychecks are barely enough to keep up with the inflated cost of food, gas, and the roof over their families' heads. And when we look at what's going on, it's shocking. They talk about the fact that the big problem in America is income inequality. And my position is the big problem in this country is income equality, not inequality, and I'll tell you why. I've broken this up into the bottom 20% of income earners, the second 20% of income earners, and the next 20% of income earners. And what you're gonna notice is in the bottom 20%, these people, only about 33% of them work at all. And as a result, they make about $7,500 a year. On average, that's what they earn. The next 20%, 85% of them are employed full time, and they earn about $31,000 a year. Okay? Where these people earn about $7,500. But when the government gets through, with the entitlement programs, look at the difference. Wow. $1,000 difference. So here's my question psychologically. Why would you work? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'll bet you in terms of net purchasing power, these people have more. Why? They don't spend money on commuting. They don't spend money on wardrobe. They don't have any overhead because they don't do anything. <laughs> These people 90 plus percent work and they earn $66,000 on average, but because they pay actual taxes, they only net 61. So the difference between here and here is only $11,000. We're paying people not to work. Now, is it just me? Or is the system turned on its head? And these guys are not working one job. They're not working two jobs. They're not working three, they're working four jobs. And they're making $1,000 more than these people who aren't working at all. You know why? Because you're paying for these people to stay home. Yep. <laughs> yep. What the hell? <laughs>